Hi guys, looks like I'm, oh, I forgot to get this going. Hold on just a second. Almost had everything going just fine, then computer froze up. <laughs> no, you're probably like, okay, this can't keep, keep happening to her every week. But everything was going real smooth, but I got it going now. So let me get on, I forgot to pop up my live so I can see ya. There we go. So if you've got any comments, I uh, got it all set up here on Facebook. Those of you on YouTube, I think I might have a way to see them, but I didn't have time to investigate it any today. So if you comment, I will check it out as soon as the live's over, over on YouTube. But here on Facebook, I am able to see it. It's right in front of me, so I'll see all your comments. Well, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> today, I'm going to be showing you the my favorite bundle in the catalog. It's Painted Poppies. It comes from the uh, Peaceful Poppies suite. Actually, I'm going to be using a few things in that suite. Um, and I really hope you enjoy them. I got three cards for you today. One at the end is going to be super quick. I just want to show you how easy it is to make a real pretty card with that designer series paper. Okay, first I want to go over a couple of things. Some of you may be new to celebration. So I just want to make sure you understand what it is. It started January 3rd and it ends March 31st. Um, if you, when you shop, if you spend at least $50 before shipping and tax, and what I'm quoting are USA prices. I live in the United States. So if you are watching this and you are in the United States and you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. And if you purchase $50 before shipping and tax, you'll get to pick out something free in the celebration brochure. And there's some really neat stamp sets and some designer series paper, just so many different things you can choose from. So that's what that is. And, and if you do a $100 order, there are a couple items in there that are free with a $100 order. So that's what the shop part is. And then there's the host. If you host a workshop, you will, um, you can, usually you get extra things. And if you get, because people are wanting to place that little bit more on that order and your sales and your workshop will go higher. And if you get to the $300 workshop, which is actually maybe right at average or under average, most workshops, you will get this that really cute ladybug set. I don't know if you can see that. I, I might get that down here in a minute and I'll show you. It is a super cute stamp set. And I've made a, a card with it before. I think I've got here, I can show it to you. Yeah, so I'll show it to you in just a minute. But it's a super cute, uh, oh, I'm sorry, super cute stamp set. And just a little sneak peek, there are gonna be dies that come out in uh, March that you'll be able to purchase. So you can die cut all the cute little images in that stamp set. So like I said, hosting a workshop is the best time is during celebration. You get a lot of free stuff that way since everybody bumps up their order to get their free stuff. So it's a win-win for everybody. And I do different workshops. You can do it as a Facebook workshop. I set up a group and you invite all your friends. And then throughout the week, I'll share videos and projects for people and they can place orders using your host code and you get credit that way. You can also just collect orders, have people place orders with your host code online or give you orders to give to me. Or you can just treat yourself and do a $300 order before shipping and tax. That way you get everything that you bought, all your Stampin' Rewards, plus that cute little set, stamp set, little ladybug, and you'll get up to six, yeah, up to six items in celebration. If you pick all just $50 items, you would get six celebration items with that. So that's just something to think about. Okay, and this is the best deal of celebration. I just had to show you real quick. The um, deal you get if you become a demonstrator, it's good to become a demonstrator any time of the year. It's only $99 and you get $125 worth, up to $125 worth of product, your choice. And you also get the business supplies you need. But then um, during celebration, you're also going to get that little cutter that they've got up there in that picture, that six by six designer series pack that has a sample of every designer uh, pack that's in the mini catalog and celebration, except I think maybe the um, the bee, the honey bee the DSP, they don't have a sample in that. So you won't get every sheet in it, but you will get a sampling of each one and a stamp set of your choice. So any current stamp set except for um, host, uh, host sets and celebration sets. You can't pick those, but any other stamp sets you can pick for free. And I'm just going to hurry up and go. I'd love for you to be in my team. If you have any questions, you can comment below or you can message me on Facebook or there's a contact link. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click on that and I can get, I'll get in touch with you. Same with if you want to host a workshop. 
and just uh, wanting to show you real quick. There's a cute little uh, cutter. It's perfect just to take along with you. Say you take some little pieces of cardstock. You've got a kid that's got a, um, a, a practice that you've got to go to and you want something to do. You can just pop this in your purse and some cardstock and cut little things and stamp. Just a nice little guillotine cutter. I really like it a lot. And I want to show you that little ladybug set. You can see that a lot better than you could in that picture, except for the lighting. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> but isn't, aren't those images so adorable? And like I said, there is going to be a die set, and it die cuts those ladybugs out and the big flower right there. And then this is the card I made. And, you, and if you've seen any of my lives earlier, you've seen this already. But isn't that cute? And this is before I had the dies, so I had to fussy cut that. So I'm looking forward to making some more cards with that, with the dies. And those will be able, you'll be able to purchase those starting, um, oh, February 4th. Now, like I said, I'm going to be showing you some projects with the Peaceful Poppies. So I wanted to show you real quick the whole suite. And I'm using actually everything in the suite except for the little elements here. I'll have to do that another time. I'd forgotten about those being the suite. I used the ribbon, the sequins, and both stamp sets except these dies. I forgot I did not use these uh, Poppy Moments dies. I've used those before. I love them. I just wanted to show you how you can do so many things with just this Painted Poppies bundle as the main focus. But I did use some of the greetings in this for the cards, since there are no greetings in this stamp set. Okay. Oh, I did want to tell you one more thing really quick before I start making some projects. Um, make sure you don't miss out on the celebration. If you like that um, Happy Birthday to You stamp set, the one has got the beautiful birthday cake and it can be a wedding cake, if you like that, this um, paper pumpkin kit coordinates with that. And they've got one little stamp set, cute piece of cake right there. That, that's got to be one of the stamps, I'm sure, in that set that comes with it. Whenever you get a paper pumpkin, you get everything you need to make the projects, plus an exclusive stamp set you won't see anywhere else. So it's a really good deal. Okay, now we're going to come to the part I know you guys like the best. Oh, take that back. I keep forgetting about my door price. <laughs> I have quite a few people share my video last week, and thank you so much. And I wanted to show you, remind you, this is whoever I draw the name out of. Oh, I need to switch my cameras again. It's going to get these uh, mailed to them. These are the cards I made in my um, mini catalog preview. So let me see who's going to win. Everybody's names all mixed up. I've got everybody's names in here. Let's see, it will be Vivian Carden. Vivian was just here yesterday. She's in my technique club. So Vivian, congratulations. I'll be giving you those cards real soon. Probably the next time I see you, that might be the easiest way to get to you. Okay, so congratulations, Vivian. Now, if you share my video today, you've got until next uh, Thursday, you will also get your name put in the drawing to get these two cards. This is the one, I, one of the cards I made in my live last week. This is one my Technique ladies made uh, uh, yesterday. And the three cards I'm going to be making here in a few minutes. So you get a total of five cards like you did last week. So if you share my video, make sure you mark shared in the comment section. And you'll get put in the drawing to get all these cards sent to you. Okay, now I'm going to get into the fun part. Now I'm going to make a pretty birthday card using the Painted Posies bundle. Poppies. I keep wanting to say posies. Painted poppies. And I love the die set that go, coordinates with this. So if you buy these together as a bundle, you'll save 10%. I love all the dies. The uh, ones I'm going to use, I'm just going to get all the dies I'm using today. This one is going to go on the first card. I use this label on a couple cards. And I use both leaves and the two flower dies. And I think, yep, that's all of them. That's all the ones I use. But really neat set. And then I wanted to show you real quick the Peaceful Moments. These are the greetings that I'm using. These are the ones that are also in the Peaceful Poppies uh, suite. Okay, so I'm going to have, oh, I also have another die set, the Stitch Shapes Framelits. And I'm going to need the number two die. I always start with number one is the smallest. This is number two of the circle dies. Okay, now I've got a piece of Thick Whisper White. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but I've already scored it. It's scored down the middle. I always score, I don't score my regular cardstock normally, but I do score the thick cardstock. Because if you don't, it doesn't fold very well. So I've got that ready. That's my card base. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of the Peaceful Poppies Designer Series paper. This is a, let's see, I can't remember how size that this was. It's two by five and a half. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in my banner triple punch. You've seen me use this many times. I love this punch. And I want to make sure that the uh, flowers are upright. So this is my bottom. So that's going to be the one that goes in, gets inserted into the punch. Put it in as far as it can go. If you do it, I think it's a quarter inch longer than what you need it. Then you can just put it in all the way and you don't have to worry about lining it up. And that'll make it perfect for you. So we've got that ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put that on my card right now. I like this side too. I almost use that side. This painted posies paper is poppies. I mean, I keep on calling posies, but painted poppies paper is so pretty. And I really love the watercolor look on this. And I'm going to be using that watercolored look when I'm stamping too. So I'm just going to put this on the right side of the card like so. Now I'm going to grab this piece here. This is going to be my greeting piece. So I'm going to bring my happy birthday from the Peaceful Moments stamp set with my Tuxedo Memento. And if you can believe it, I'm only going to be using two ink pads on all three of these cards. So I'm going to put happy birthday close to the middle. It doesn't have to be right in the middle because I'm going to be die cutting it. So that's ready to go. And then with this one here, I'm going to stamp this larger flower here, once again, using a tuxedo. And sometimes it, you don't, you want to make sure you get enough black ink on that center part of the flower. So I'll twist it a little bit and that seems to uh, ink it up a lot better. Hold it down for a few seconds. And that's ready to go. And now the smaller flower that's also in this um, painted posy, poppy set. And that's going to go, well, I'll angle that a little bit so make sure I have room to die cut. So that's ready to go. Now I'm going to do some uh, coloring in, but real quick coloring in. This is going to go along with the watercolor look that's on the designer series paper. I'm going to grab this one right here and my uh, Poppy Parade ink pad. I'm going to ink that up. Now it is not going to match perfectly. Let me stand up here so I can see a little better. Just kind of angle it so it's going to be pretty covered up. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. This one is larger, so it's probably going to cover it up completely. Yeah. But I'm going to be die cutting it, so that's, that's fine. Then I'm going to take the biggest speckle looking, or spackle, whatever you want to call that, um, stamp. It's also in the same set. Use the same Poppy Parade ink. Now, the neat thing with this one, it's textured. That's why it's a little lighter. This one is actually going to show up darker. So I want to have that splatter look. Isn't that neat? Here, let me put that a little closer. Oops, I knew I'd knock that down. Hold on a second. There we go. But isn't that pretty? I love the speckle on that. It just really makes it go with that paper. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So those are, that's the exact same color. It's just because that big, the biggest blotch is textured makes a lighter image of the ink. So I didn't even have to stamp off. Okay, now I think we're ready. Oh, no, we're not. I need to do my leaves. So I decided to go ahead and use the memento. A lot of times I'll use old olive, the same color that's on the paper. But this time I decided I'm going to use the black. So I'm going to do four of these. And I made it a little longer than I needed to because I am so happy that Stampin' Up! has given us two leaf dies. So I can do two at a time and it's not going to take me as long to uh, die cut them all out. Now I have everything ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Bring in my die cutting machine. Make sure I get that in the screen for you. There we go. Let's see how many we can do at the same time. I can do, let's see, I know I need that one out for this one, the two flowers, and then the two leaves. This one is going to go on like that. And I might even be able to do this one at the same time. Let's see. Yep, when they're not too close, you can do that. Sometimes if you stamp them too close together, it's you can't do both of them at the same time if they're on the same sheet. And with this one, I'm actually going to skip leaves, have a leaf in between. That way I know they're not going to bump into each other. Okay, so you see I lined up the image completely inside that center. Get this on top. Put that through real quick. I really love our dies. I know I say this every, about every time I use them in a video, but I love how much easier they are to line up than our old ones. 
Okay, get those out of the way. So I got two more leaves. I'm done with the flowers. So I'll put those over there. I still need my leaves. Now I'm gonna grab, oh, there's the other flower. Okay, my happy birthday and my circle. And I'm gonna have it be up just a little bit, not quite in the exact center, because I did that with my first card and it didn't work out quite as well as I wanted. So I'm gonna have it a little more on the upper right of the circle. That'll help when I put the flowers on my card. Okay, this one's bouncing a little bit, so let's move this down a little. There we go. Now it's not in between any magnets. Okay. I think that's all the die. Oh, no, there's one more thing. I almost forgot the neat swirl die. You're going to like this die. Get these off. I'm just throwing paper everywhere so you don't have to wait for me. Okay, now I'm going to use this neat one, done with the leaves, put this back on, and this is a three and a quarter, actually three by three piece of Flirty Flamingo. It's one of the colors in the designer series paper. Run this through. I'm going to do it twice. I don't think I had to yesterday, but just since I'm on the live, I want to make sure it die cuts real well. But all the little pieces come out so quick, I don't even have to get my die brush out. I love this swirl. I love how the center stays open. So I could just stamp on the flirty flamingo, but I wanted to have a little white circle in there. See how quick those came out. But I love the stitching. Like I said, I am always a sucker for the stitching. So let's get all these little pieces off because we're going to have to use this that kind of machine later. Let me get all cleaned off. Okay, now we've got everything done. Oops, I bounced out a die. Let's get that back in there because I don't want to lose those. Okay, now we'll bring in the card base again. And I'm going to bring in my happy birthday circle. Let's put some snail on it. Okay. Oh, hi, Jane. I don't think you've missed too much, but you can always see the beginning of the video later when we're all done. Okay, there's my happy birthday. And I love how that uh, second uh, smallest circle die works so great from the stitch shapes. It works perfectly in that. And if you wanted to cover up more, because you could use the bigger one, and it still would have a little bit of the swirl on the outside. But I wanted to keep show all the swirls on this one. So I'm going to just put some snail here in the center part of it. I'm not going to worry about all the little lines, because it'll stay on with no problem. And I'm going to put this about right here. To be honest, if you just if you didn't want to put more any more flowers on it, that actually just makes a cute card just like that. But I wanted to add flowers. So, let me put some Stampin' Dimensionals on this bigger one. And once again, I'm using up all my little pieces here. I want to get all my money's worth out of these guys. And I use, I'm actually, I'm using Dimensionals in every single card today. I usually do. I love popping them up. I like the dimension it gives your cards. Okay, so get these out of the way here. And I'm going to put this one right out there okay now this one I know I'm gonna want the leaves down around here so I'm gonna put some snail here on the bottom of this one and I, I what I do I'm gonna hold this down I know I want this to be about right there and I want them to come out about like that so yeah that look here I'll put angle down a little bit and then I'll put another leaf right there. And then just to make sure that the whole thing stays on real well, I'm going to put some snail on the back of the leaves too. I'm going to put a little bit right there too. And we'll put that guy. Actually, I've got my one little Stampin' Dimensional in the way. There we go. That works. So there's that one. And then these little guys are going to get stuck up here. And that's the card. See, it didn't take that long. That's the quick way to color them in, just using that watercolor look. And I just love how the splotches on this paper go together with that flower. So I hope you like that one. That's the first one. This, like I said, if you share my video, you'll be getting all the cards that I'm making today, plus the two I showed at the beginning of the video. So if you want to be put in the drawing, uh, share my video, and then make sure you comment shared below. So this will be one of the cards you'll get. Now let's go with number two. This one's going to be a thank you card. 
and I'm using different colors that are in the paper. There are so many colors in this paper. That's another reason I love it so much. This is a piece of Blackberry Bliss. It's five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna fold it in half, like I do always do. Then I'm gonna bring, I'm, I've got two pieces of Whisper White that's four by five and a quarter, because we're gonna do an inside to this one since the cardstock's so dark. There's also a piece of Mossy Meadow. This one is two and three quarter by three and a quarter. This piece of Whisper White is two and a half by three. And then the Designer Series paper, this is a two by four. And this is a, I'm sorry, one and a half by four. That's what it is. And this is a one by four, or four by one. Because you always say the cross first. And these are the other sides to those, but these are the ones I want to use for the card. And then I've got a piece here for the uh, banner, or the little uh, label, and it's three by one and three quarter on the Whisper White. Okay, so let's start getting this together. I have to remember everything I did here. Okay, we're gonna take this one here. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper. And this time, I'm just gonna stamp this in different places on this paper, just the big one, big flower. And like I said, I'm gonna twist it. I just feel like that gets that center a lot better than just uh, tapping it. And whenever I do a, a pat, you don't want to make straight lines, so think of it as a triangle. So there's the bottom of the triangle, and then here's one up here. So that kind of forms a triangle. And then I'm just going to do one here, so that's going to be like another little triangle. So there we go, that's ready to go. And then the other stamping, let me grab my label, and I'm going to stamp the thank you that also comes out of the Peaceful Moments. There's so many good greetings in that stamp set. I'm gonna stamp it in the middle, and again, that's with the Tuxedo Black Memento. And that's all the stamping on the outside, that is. We're gonna stamp some in the, well, let's go ahead and stamp the inside too while we're at it. Okay, there is a stamp, where did I put that stamp? Well, did I leave it in the box? I didn't think I left it in the box. Nope, it's, oh, there it is. I've got it underneath my little tablet over here, didn't see it. This one says you shouldn't have, but I'm glad you did. So I'm gonna ink it up with my Tuxedo Black. Oh, thanks, Judy. There's a delay on the, when you do lives, there's a delay. Oh, and Ruth, thanks too. I'm glad you guys like that first card. There is, I can't get over the delay. The first time I did a Facebook Live, it was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Cause right now I'm looking at what you're looking at in front of me and it's, I am way ahead of that already. <laughs> so I'm putting that on top. And now I'm gonna grab, I love this stamp. This is also in the Painted po uh, Poppies. And I'm gonna put that across the bottom. So I'm gonna do that with a Tuxedo Black. Real quick. And stamp it along the bottom. Center. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. And I could leave it like that, but I want some color. So I'm gonna grab my light uh, Rich Razzleberry Stampin' Blend. And just because they're so small, I decided for the inside, I'm just going to color it real quick. I am going to use both shades on the front of the card. And you can see I'm going really fast, and I'm leaving some white space. That gives you that watercolor look, too, if you leave a little white space. So don't, and if you get out of the lines, that's okay, too. That's also part of the watercolor technique, I guess you call it, or look. So don't worry about coming out of the lines. Don't worry about getting it all colored in. It looks really good. Just doing it real quick. And I am using the brush tip. You can always use the blunt tip too if you like using that better. I'm glad there are two tips because I can, it just get, like, makes it so everybody's happy. I know some people that only use the blunt tip. I use it sometimes when it's real small, but a lot of times I just stick with the brush tip. Okay, see, all those are colored in. I'm gonna bring it up a little closer See, if you can see some of the, there is some white space in that. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it looks really good. So I'm going to go ahead and put that inside the card because that's ready to go. Okay. And you see, I don't cover up the whole thing, but there's the inside. There we go. So that's all done. Now this one, we're going to do some coloring. And this is the Dark Rich Razzleberry. And what I'm going to do, yes, you're going to have to sit here and watch me color. <laughs> if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll look up and see if there are any on there. But what I'm going to do, I'm doing the dark. I always do the dark first. 
you want to go over it a couple times because you do want it to saturate the cardstock because it gives you a better, uh, it uh, blends better that way. But as you can see, I'm using jagged lines up here. I don't want a straight line because if you ever look at a flower, you're not going to see a straight line in between the shading and a flower. So it's just kind of scribbling. I'm just doing the middle center or the inner part of each petal. Like I said, this is a dark rich razzleberry. Get this all done. I don't know how the weather is in your neck of the woods, but my goodness, here in Indiana, we go from it being close to 60 a few days ago, or I think it actually got in the 60s or a few days last week. And now all of a sudden it's not even going to get to freezing, I don't think. <laughs> I went out to take the dog out and it was cold. Okay, so there I've got all the dark done. Now that center, I don't like all the white. I don't know if you can see that or not. That white that's in there, but I didn't want to use the real dark blend because that would shade the black too much. So I'm going to bring in my light rich, rich razzleberry and I'm even going to go over that just to give it a little more color. And color in the petals quickly. And then when I'm all done coloring them in real quick, then I am going to go over where the two shades meet. I am kind of going over them now. I always color on the dark again because this is how you get it to blend, the shades to blend, so it's not so stark. Now that's too much of a difference right there. I don't know if you can see that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and where those two shades meet, this is still with a light rich razzleberry. I'm going to scribble over those a little bit. And I'm not going to do all the way to the um, end because I kind of want the ends of the to be even lighter. So even adding a little more of the light made the middle darker, but that let, let the shading go a lot better. See how the shading is not as stark. I can just add a little bit more there on that one. Isn't that, I love that. I use my blends a lot. They are so much fun. So I'll try to get these colored in real quick for you so you're not getting bored. Oh, Ruth. You make me so jealous. <laughs> Ruth's down in Arizona, Tucson, says it's 60 degrees and sunny. I bet it's a beautiful day. I bet you don't miss this Indiana weather at all. Oops, I forgot a dark section here. Okay, get these. Hard to think of things to say when you're coloring, so you're probably about ready to go to sleep. <laughs> hi, Diana. Thanks, you gave me something to talk about. Say hi. <laughs> what I should have done was color all of these but one, so you didn't have to sit here and watch me color all of them. I love coloring when it's just me, but when everybody's watching and I know they're wanting me to get done, I probably get paranoid. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Just one more. But see, it's not taking that long at all. I go a little slow at the beginning because I want to stay in the lines a little more on this. Okay. Oh, Judy, 28 in Lafayette. Yeah, that's about what it is here in Mooresville. It's cold. Okay, I think I got that done. I think we're supposed to get a little... Precipitation tonight might be a little mixed precipitation, but hopefully that just happens while we're sleeping. Okay, so now the flowers are all done. So that's another way to color them in. You can do that watercolor look like we did at the beginning where I just did the stamping and did the splotches. And this one gives you a little more, oh, maybe an elegant look. I'm not sure how, how to say, more finished look maybe. So now I'm gonna put that on my mossy meadow. Oh, there's the snails right in front of me. Let's see how it seeps through and that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. Oh, J Judy just says it's going to start snowing at five. Yay. <laughs> well, it is January, I guess. Well, af oh, is it over? Oh, it's just past the halfway mark. Boy, the months just fly by. Okay, now I'm going to bring in, let's see, I think I, yeah, I'm, I am die cutting one thing. Let's go ahead and get that done quick before I forget. So bring this back in. I'm going to bring and one of the label dies from the, from the Painted Posies bundle. Oops, get that top one off of there to work a lot better. I'll get my thank you on there. Okay, I think that's all, the, yep, that's all the die cutting on this one. And then the 
the other card will just have a little die cutting too, so I want to make sure that's all cleaned up. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in that Whisper White piece, bring in my designer series paper. Now I'm not showing you all of the designs in this paper. Oop, that one's ran out. So I have another one on back up. There we go. Ooh, that one's about gone too. I might have to get another one out. Okay, I'm going to put this here on the right. Make sure you're still seeing that in the video. Sometimes I start to move it and get it out of the video. So I've got that on there. Now I'm going to put this one on with the flowers. And that one is going to go kind of up a little bit right there. Make sure it's straight. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bring in this four by one piece, the green stripes. I almost use this side over here, but it kind of having my flowers the same color kind of washed it out a little bit. So I changed it up. But I do like this green stripe across here. So I'm going to put that across there. Bring in my little greeting. I think before I put the dimensionals on here, I'm going to use some of these peaceful poppy sequins. I'll put this down here where I can see them a little better. I really like these. They're so pretty. The colors, I think it's, there's dark, like this is dark poppy parade. Some of them are shaped like flowers, which I think this is one of them. And that's what I'm wanting. I'm wanting the ones that are shaped. No, actually that's just shaped like a regular sequin. But to be honest, that would work, that's going to work too. So if I can't find a flower one, I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool. I see a flower right there. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. There we go. And what I'm going to do, I could just use the multi-purpose glue, but I'm going to use the uh, mini glue dots. It, the mini glue dot is a little too big for this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze that down. I'm going to go ahead and put all of them on here quick. I also used a little black flower. If I don't find, the regular sequins will work too. I just like wanted the flowers for this one. There we go. Love this take your pick tool. Oops, that was user error. There we go. Get that. And you always wanna squeeze it down on the glue dot. So it's on there really good. You don't want it falling out. Oh, and there's a gold flower right there on top. Cool. Okay, so those are the sequins I'm going to use. Get these closed up before I make a big mess. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this, actually, before I pull it off, I don't think you can see it, let me get in the video better, but there is a little bit of glue dot sticking outside, so I'm taking my fingernails and kind of pushing them, pushing it underneath that flower, okay? Now I can pull the whole thing up, and if there's still some sticking out, you can fold it down as you're holding it. And I'm going to put it about right there. I just want a little color on the, um, and you can use this tool too to pick it up, this side. Take that off. I'm going to squeeze. I forgot to squeeze that while it was on there, so I'll do it while I'm holding it. And I'm going to put this one right here. The reason I'm making sure there's no glue dot sticking out here, you don't want this sticking in your envelope if you go to mail it. So I'm wanting to make sure all that glue dot is underneath that flower. Pop this off. And we'll put it about right there. And once again, when I put on sequins, I usually use an odd number. And then I make that little triangle like I did here. So now I'm going to grab my dimensionals again. Use some cutting. Use up all my little pieces here. I think I only need four of these, so I haven't cut those. And I always cut them before I take them off the backing. It just makes it so much easier. Okay, one more. Oops, those stuck together still. Didn't cut those very well. Okay. Make sure I keep talking loud enough. Sometimes I start mumbling and you probably can't hear me. Okay. Those are all off. I'm going to put this one right here. Actually, I normally probably would have put this on the card base first before I put something that's got dimensionals on it, but this will still work. Now I'm going to put snail on here. Yep, that one's gone. I had a feeling that was going to happen, but thankfully I've got more snail right in front of me. Okay, and then I'm going to put this on the card base, and this card's going to be done. So this is going to be another one. If you share my video and comment shared below, you'll get this card too. So there's that. So that's another color combination with the same paper. And there's the inside in case you missed that. OK, 
Okay, I got one more and this one is super easy. I wanted to show you, I've shown this in other videos. Here is the full sheet of paper that I'm using. And the neat thing about this, you're like, why is one upside down? They've made it so you can cut this in half and then just use those sections. Like if you want, if you were doing a scrapbook page, you could definitely cut this in half and have a border for both of your two page, if you did a two page layout. So, but this time I'm just cutting it for a card. I've already cut them out. Let me grab all my pieces here. This is a piece of Poppy Parade. So it's another color. It's in the designer paper. Five and a half by eight and a half, the regular card base. Let's get these out of the way. I don't need those anymore. Don't want to lose my lid. That goes rolling around. I've already lost my little lid for this one. I'll probably find it. It fell on the floor one day and I haven't seen it since. Okay. I heard it fall down, but boy, I sure don't know where it went. <laughs> Okay, there's that. Now this is the paper cut down. Isn't that pretty? I mean, that's just gorgeous. That's why I'm doing very, very little stamping on this because this is my image. That's, that's what I want on it. And I decided to make it, you, normally when I put a layer on here, it's four by five and a quarter, which is what this black one is. This is four by five and a quarter. But I wanted to have a little black border and not just have it on here. So this one's a little bit smaller. I just made it an eighth of an inch smaller both ways. So this is a three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So I'm gonna hurry up and put this on. Oop, I picked up the wrong one. There we go. Empty one's not gonna help any. Okay, put this one on the black one. And now before I put this on the card, I'm gonna be putting a piece of ribbon across the bottom. Now this is also in the suite. This is Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding Ribbon. It's quarter of an inch wide. I'm using a six inch piece and a four inch piece. Now I'm gonna take the six inch piece. Now I could just use one big piece and wrap it around, but I like to save my ribbon. So I'm not using too much. And really, to be honest, the main reason I do it this way, I think it's easier. I'm gonna put this down here. Sometimes when I wrap it around, I end up twisting that knot and it goes everywhere and I just have a hard time with that. So I'm gonna put this across the bottom like so, so it's attached on the back. Then I'm going to take my four inch piece, thread it underneath the attached ribbon like so, and then I'm just going to tie it with a single knot. And the other neat thing about doing it this way, now I'm going to do something opposite. Normally I have my little tails going down. I want these to go up. I just thought it looked better on my card. I did it by accident when I made it and I liked it. I thought, oh, we'll keep it that way. But the neat thing about this, I can move this since it's just tied down with a single knot, it'll go back and forth on the ribbon. So I'm going to even move this down a little bit because I can tell I got too uh, far over because I need to have room for my label. So that's another neat plus for this. You can loosen up the knot a little bit and move it back and forth wherever you want it. Okay, now we're going to bring in this piece. This is another three by one and three quarter. And I'm going to use the wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. And yes, this is also from that Peaceful Moment stamp set. So this is a very good go-to greeting set. So I've, here I've made three cards for three totally different things. I love that. Okay, bring in the die cutting machine just one more time. And we're gonna use that label. Let me get back in the screen again. Use this label. I can only do one at a time since I've only got the one label. So I'll go ahead and do the greeting first. I'll make sure that the words are straight. And that through real quick. Oops. And then I'm going to do another one with a piece of the same size, three by one and three quarter of the rich Razzleberry. Hard stop. Okay. And now we are almost done with this card. Like I said, if you ever need a quick card, because I'm probably going to get this done in less than five minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab, actually I'm going to get, now that's going to be done here in probably a minute. We're going to cut this in half because I want to have it showing on each end. Since this is the exact same label, I have to cut it to make it work. Oops. And make sure, when you look at these sides, it's going to take a little more than a minute since I'm going to show you some things. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Yeah, you can, just a little bit. The lighting is stinking in here today. But there's a groove it embosses a nice little frame all the way around this label. I don't know if you might be able to see it better in this one. 
but it's a really neat groove. So I want to make sure that the top is what I'm going to be putting the uh, adhesive on, not the back. And then I'm going to stick this in. I'm going to angle it so I can see it here. I want to make sure that there's nothing showing up here on the sides. So that end is on there. Hurry up and do it to the other end. Because I didn't want it to just be white. I like having a little bit of a border. Sometimes it just white is fine, like on the card I made, the last card I just made. But this one I wanted a little more color. So now I've got a little mat. So I'll put that a little closer so you can see it. Okay. Put some... Oh, no, I did dimensionals with this. Like I said, I used dimensionals on every single card today. Let's grab this one. Get my four cut. I could easily on this one not do that. But since it's going over ribbon, a lot of times I will put dimensionals on something that goes over ribbon too. Because sometimes you get a little bulge. Now this ribbon is thin enough, I probably wouldn't have gotten that bulge. But some of the other ribbon, you get a little bulge if you don't use dimensionals. Okay, those are out of the way. Pop this on. Oh, once again, I put something on with dimensionals before I put it on the card. That's all right. No biggie. So yeah, I'm going to move that down a little bit. Now that I've got, well, I'm going to put this on the card first. Then I will trim my ends. Because I don't want to trim them too short. Because I kind of like them a little longer, but I don't want them hanging over the card too much. And I always make sure I put some uh, snail on the ribbon too, so it doesn't uh, pop up there. Put this on the poppy parade. Get my scissors. Cut these at an angle. That more like that. There we go. See how that only stamping we did was that uh, greeting at the bottom. So I love that designer series paper. So let me bring in all the cards again. These are the three I just got done doing. So all of these are with that painted poppies bundle. And the designer paper that's in the series, in the suite, along with the ribbon. And the dies in the bundle are just wonderful. I'll show you the, this again. Well, you won't see all of them. <laughs> Never mind. I forgot I was using some of them. But I just love this. Now you can see why it's my favorite one from the catalog. So I hope you enjoyed today's uh, live. I'm going to show you one more time because I know some people have popped on that weren't on earlier. If you share my video and comment shared below, you'll get put in a drawing to get all five of these cards and I'll be mailing it to them. So three I made today, one of them I made last week, and this was what my Technique girls made last night. So I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, switch here. Hopefully it's not gonna be too cold this weekend. Hopefully where you're at too, I hope you have a really great weekend and enjoy the weather. See you soon, bye.